Hi folks, Ron Marlow here with Wired For You. I'm going to show you how to make a rose ring. Starting off with a piece of sterling silver here. I'm going to uh, stop the camera a couple times in the middle of this because the process duplicates itself over and over again. Uh, cut yourself a piece of wire, make it between 8 and 12 inches in length. You'll have a little excess. Depends upon the size of the ring you're going to make. We are making again a rose ring. This wire is square. It is half hard and uh, you can do it in anything from a 21 gauge to an 18 or a 19 gauge wire. Start by spiraling it, putting it in the pin vise, slipping it down the vise and tightening it. Now I'm going to do this slightly off camera but I want to describe it up front here. Use your flat nose pliers and grab the square end of the wire. Use your pin vise and lock into the square portion of your, of your wire. Now. It's easiest to do this by simply rolling this square wire down your leg. Hold this side with one side, hold this here on your leg and just roll it like so. Okay, and you'll change this. I'm gonna zoom in on it real tight. This is a flat wire square. See it on camera? It's, let me make sure I can get that just a good look. Each side is squared up. All right, now I'm going to spin it in my hand off, off camera. I'm going to count it one, two, three, four, five real quick little spins down my leg. And you see how it looks now? This will give you the petal look on the top half of the rose. Okay? All right. Let's take it out of our vise. Now we switch over to showing you or introducing you to two simple tools that jewelers use all the time. They're called mandrels. These are ring mandrels. They come in different sizes and shapes. This one naturally is smooth. They're tapered, typically made out of steel. Uh, just a nice product to have. This one's very, very old, but they're hard to wear out. Uh, keep a little oil on them. They won't rest on you. That's probably my problem was I've been carrying them around for 30 years. Uh, this one here is the uh, 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 same type of mandrel, uh, but it has the American standard for ring sizes on it. Uh, you know, up here at the top, naturally be a size one, down lower, you're going to 13s, 14s, etc. Ring size. We're going to use this mandrel to calibrate uh, the size or the uh, size of the ring that we'd like to make now. So let's let's start by wrapping this piece of wire around the mandrel. We want to say make a size six ring, so we're going to start one size up. We're going to start at the five and wrap it around, okay? You can go around this two times if you want. I'm going to lay it here. I'm going to try and get you a good picture so you see this. All right. So here is the crisscross of the wires. Put them as close together as you can and then crisscross them this way. All right. Do you see it? There we go. All right. Now take the time. Let me zoom in on that. Maybe get you a little better picture on it. See how the wire, all I've done is twist one up to the right and one to the left. Now, I want you to continue that pattern, hooking underneath the wire that you just grabbed or just twisted. Go underneath each time. There. Now, let's make sure that's clearly said. I'm hooking this wire under the wire, the one that I'm putting ahead of it. Cool? Okay. So twist that around and kind of force it a little bit into place after you have um, wrapped that two or three times remember this is called a rose ring so the top half of the ring will slowly turn into what appears to be a rose uh, here's an example another example of what we're ultimately shooting for here is a, a good looking rose top okay simple enough uh, after you have gotten to where you think you have made your rose the way you want to make it slip the ring mandrel or the ring off of the mandrel and tuck each side. Here we go. I'm going to zoom back out. Tuck each side. There we go. Underneath, so we're taking the excess wire underneath the shank of the ring. This is the shank. Pull it underneath and make it a nice crisp knot. Pull it over it again. See how that was done? I'm going to do it again. I like to do it like two times, just makes for a better appearance. And end with the wire on the top. There it is. Okay, go to the other side, do the exact same thing. As you are tying this knot around the shank of the ring, you are making it smaller. It's just part of it. We're shooting for one size up. 
we were going to shoot for we started around a five we're going to make a six and here's where we are so far okay wrapped it around the shank twice take your side cutters your nice set of nippers make sure that you spin in the wire on the top half of the ring so that it does not interfere with the customer's hand nip that off nice as close as you possibly can and i put it on an angle so that i can't feel it I'm still going to roll off of it. See how I just grabbed it, rolled a little off of it, made it even smoother. Exact same thing on the opposite side. Pull the wire down so that it doesn't contact with the customer, and you're going to nip it on the top. And try and angle it such that the wire slips right into the, where the original knot was. Take your chain nose pliers, kind of roll off of it, make sure there's no sharps on there. Now, here is your ring so far. You've made a nice little rose ring on the top. However, it is not the correct size for the customer. You can put it back on the mandrel, and if you'll notice, remember we were starting for the five, she's already shrunk down to about a four and a quarter. This is where a couple simple tools come into play. Take your flat nose pliers, you can, I'll oh, give you a country term, we're gonna shuck it down the mandrel. All right. Now we've kind of tightened up the knot already, but we're going to take it to the next step. And the next step is simply to take a hammer to it. Let's set those aside. And I'm going to use this Janus hammer from Rio Grande. It's a nice little hammer. It's a number 19 frets. It has two heads. The Rio Grande write-up is incorrect on it. Uh, one side of the head is flat. The other side is domed. Uh, amazing little hammer. Excellent for ring work. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chisel the back side of this ring one little step at a time. And we're going to give it an angled look. All right. So I'll start it on the table, and I'm going to take it. It's easier to do just on your lap. Start right here. Let's start in the back. And just simply whack it. Be consistent where you're at, and you're wanting to get a flat spot on the ring. All right, now you can make this flat spot a little deeper if you wish, but remember, if you have thinner wire, you might break the spot. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to rotate just a little bit to the side of it. Again, using the flat side and or the dome side. It doesn't really matter. I like the dome generally on the show. It just gives it a nice little curb appeal. Um, and work your way around just a little bit at a time. Okay, right there, right where I'm beside it. Take a little practice and whack it. All right, now you have a double there. Try to be consistent to keep the length the same. I'm going to work my way around the ring now. Okay, little bit by little bit, I took that hammer, worked my way around the ring with the hammer and around the mandrel, and now I'm just going to polish it a little bit while it's still on the mandrel, makes it easier. Okay, Rio Grande sells a, uh, a cloth called a sunshine cloth. I love them. They're excellent for cleaning. Polish it up a little bit. And while you're doing that, feel for any sharps. Make sure there's nothing that's popped up while you've been making this ring. Now, here we go. Here's what we've got so far. We have the rose ring on the top. We've got the shank on the side. And then we've taken the time to add a little bit of bling to it. So it kind of catches the eye. All right. There it is. Have any questions? Send me a text. Oh, just a note. Now she's at her size six. Thanks, folks.